Thank and real quick, let's bring Michaela on so she can join in on this. Hold on. Yeah. We're going to bring our, our psychology and, and counseling expert. Hello. Hey lovely. Okay. <laughs> so Michaela, meet Marvin. Marvin, meet Michaela. This is the, the better. Marvin. This is the better McCord sister, the sweeter one. This is her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so go ahead. Go ahead with what you were saying. I just wanted her to be able to chime in. And um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much what she's saying. She's like, I don't want y'all to go after her at all. And, uh, and this this just the video. And, and she mentioned that several times. I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just, it's subliminal messaging. It's like, I'm like, yes. well, there you know, go. kind of like, exactly. Kind of like, I mean, if you don't want them to go after her, you simply don't mention it. Period. Yeah, just don't say it. Right? And, 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 also, <laughs> and, 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 and problem. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, like the whole premise around which she did her video, um, regardless of whether she had mentioned that or not, they would have gone after her anyway. So I mean, you know, and it and it, and it just made matters worse. Well. So, I mean, and I find and I find that like it's often the men who do it, and then once the men do it, then you know, how to call the female and anybody else who's going to want to troll, troll, troll that person will feel emboldened to do so because like 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 um your sister your sister, um, your sister was saying before that once you allow it to happen to one person, then other people feel that they can do it to other people. Oh, it's a snowball. And um, effect. yeah, snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely it's like, a snowball effect. I I couldn't agree more, and I I don't know. How long you have today? I don't know if you could stay on a little bit at okay. least my segment. Um, because oh, here she is. Hi, I came back. Hi. Um, no. Um, because I the reason I asked you to stay on, Marvin, is because I'm going to be talking about um, discrimination and what the psychology behind discrimination is, and addressing the elephant in the room. I'm obviously a privileged white female. And so I just wanted to point that out and say that I am speaking strictly to the psychology and I thought that it would be helpful to have you stay on and sort of give your feedback and your thoughts on the subject, um, mm -hmm. if that's okay with you. That's fine, it's cool with you, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so for the first thing I really wanted to address um, is that is sort of the, this idea that, of, of discrimination that after just repeated exposure to discrimination, this ongoing discrimination, I really like the analogy that you gave Mervin of the swimming upstream. Um, that's really when you're fighting a current. Um, and that current is discrimination that's perpetuated through things like what you were just talking about. Through things like yeah. podcasts, talk shows, it's perpetuated in its growth, but it is in our society. And so the psychology that I see behind that is that people learn they can't do for themselves. They learn that their efforts are ineffective, hence the swimming upstream. It's like they can't ever get there because they're, they have this continual pushback. And this leads to things like a lack of motivation, depression, anxiety. I mean, all of the big ones. Um, yeah. and, and judging by your face, it seems like you have some thoughts on this. Well, no, I mean, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's just um, I mean, like I said, uh, that's the reason why I use that analogy because basically if you're, if you're, if you're swimming upstream, right, um, where say, and you, that your route to the same thing so the same thing that everybody else is is is, is actually vying for is that much harder. Of course mm -hmm. you're going to have. Yes. Of course you're going to be more mentally stressed. Of course you're going to be more physically stressed. Of course you're going to fall sick more often. Of course you're going to you won't be able to focus as much. Um, and I mean, I, I grew up with um with um had, I, was, I was brought up in a single parent home, a single mother, and um and my mom you know put me, my sister, and my brother all through you know all of us at uni through university on one salary. And like in her in her lifetime, she's owned. Um, owned about you know two homes. I'm I'm 46. I don't own Jack, right? But she did that as one person, and um, mm -hmm. and all the while fighting against what I can like, what I can say like, a, a lot of discrimination. And one of the things that, that you know that was an issue for my mom is like it was really hard and difficult for her to just be happy. Like you know, I'm, yeah. I it was just it was really tough. And I remember one day I was like. I was I was whistling and I was really happy and everything and I was young I mean I was like I was between six and ten and she goes and she looks at me and she goes what do you, what do you got to be happy about and like, <laughs> and, and like and like you know and and, 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 I, and it stays with me I'm forty six and I still remember it but like I was like and like now it, now it makes sense because I was like yeah my mom was just like she she couldn't she was you know three children yeah. everything was, was a struggle all the time like all yeah. the time it's like mm -hmm. she never got any respite. You know, right? And, and and for her and for her to get respite, I mean, she, I mean, I, I think that's probably the reason why she sent myself eventually like to 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 weekly boarding school, sent my sister to boarding school, because I mean, you know, you just need to breathe. 
and like yeah. and that's not and, and that's not what she yeah. you know when she when she signed up you know the Heidi Court to 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 marry my 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 now um, Heidi Court father they never really were together but like he didn't kind of like you know um, chalk up to what what the expectations that they or the, the what they'd arranged she didn't sign up to be a single parent but that's what she ended up being so I mean like when you talk to, when you speak to the to the mental strain or the fatigue you know mm-hmm. of, of just like the day to day of having to struggle of like you know um you 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 you, you you, you're barely managing to, to feed your kids or you manage to feed them. But when you go to work, it's it's a battle because like you're dealing with like sexual harassment. You're dealing with like being undermined. Mm-hmm. You're just getting a respite. And people forget that, you know, on average, your average human being sleeps about eight hours, but we spend eight hours in the workplace. Yeah. Yes. It's like, it's like, it's like a huge chunk of our lives. It's so massive. If, so if, every, if you're five days a week, you're waking up and mm-hmm. that's what you have to go to. That's what you have to go to. People who don't understand mm-hmm. you, people who don't well, consider you, people who talk over you, people who just like act as if you don't there and you're not there, people who just basically say things and they're not thinking about what they're saying. And that is mm-hmm. your day to day, five days a week. Mm-hmm. It's, right. it's 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 unbearable. It's discrimination yeah. fatigue and, and and discrimination burnout is what it is. <laughs> Yeah. And it especially hit me in the gut earlier, Mervin, when you said that your mother asked you what do you have to be happy about. Because yeah. that, yeah, it, it hit me straight in the gut. Because that's really the problem that we're facing. And what what else occurred to me while you were talking, Mervin, was that you know a lot of people claim to be equal opportunity employers. And when we're talking about discrimination and swimming upstream, where's the equal opportunity? Because you're right, you have so many people who are just fighting and fighting and fighting. There is no equal opportunity because other fish they're no. already upstream. The people yeah. competing against are already way upstream. Um, yeah. So I and and. And that that what we talked about earlier that such a small percentage are in true of minorities and women are in true power positions really does make a difference. And and one of the things that I'm not going to go into politics, but just that I that I thought was a very beautiful statement was I watched a video of a little girl, a little uh, a, a little African American girl talking about what it meant to her to see Kamala Harris going into office. She's like, she looks like me. She looks like me. I can do this. You know, it was just this excitement, like, oh, I can do this. This, this is something. And people don't. I, I think that a lot of uh, white people. I'm just going to call, just call it out. Forget that it's only recently become. Uh, it's only recently been that we got rid of Jim Crow and all that, right? It's in yeah. our lifetime, in our my parents' lifetime. This is recent, mm-hmm. and that. It's, we're still not there yet. There's still not enough minorities uh, across the board, any minority and, and true power positions. There's not enough in politics. It's getting better. It even it's rep- getting better. No, you're fine. Go ahead. I was going to say, even representation, that's what we're really talking about. It's just, it, and mm-hmm. one of the things that was most powerful for me, and this is actually an example that I really like to bring up is Black Panther. And that was like yeah. the first superhero that you see who is African or, or just black, you know, who has that yeah, color. Yeah, yeah. That's the first yeah. thing. I'm watching through uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies right now with my boyfriend. And we were just talking last night that you don't see any people of color. Like you just don't. And I'm no. like, the Hobbit there can't be black movies. hobbits. <laughs> there can't be black hobbits. I mean, yeah, come but on now. The, the, but that's the thing. There's, there's, just, there's just no inclusion. I mean, the thing is like, it's like, Mm-mm. I think that, that that's the thing. It's like I think, and I think one because a lot of people were talking about um, um, how do you call it, um, uh, Robin D'Angelo and like you know, why fragility initially was like was like seen as a good thing, they were seen as a bad thing, and like you know, people people have different positions on it. But one of the things that I found that she said that was really really impactful when I watched some of the videos, she said like she she asked the audience like you know, can you can you do you realize that you have gone you've gone through your life. Um, either in you know, listening to to to, to um, African or Black music. I mean, I, I think I don't. I would, I would say R and B, but like like music or like like because um, I don't I don't like like white music and Black music. I don't, I don't think music has a color myself. But anyway, listening listening to like you know, Black influence music, like Marvin Gaye and mm-hmm. But but and she goes like, and it's never occurred to you that that you don't that that you could you would you could actually have you could get value from having a Black person in your life. She, she was right. to like, and, she, and she was like, she was like, she was like, so many of you like will go to your grave never having had a true black friend, like, and and mm-hmm. and and that is the thing. The thing is like, I find in 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 white society, like, is like, people can they? I mean, 
I mean, your guys are white, so I'm going to say has, but, but like white people can, can exist amongst themselves mm-hmm. and, and just be oblivious to any other culture. And it's like, very and true. Like, and, and, and as if, as if like they have nothing to learn. And like what, what I find interesting about that is like even within white culture, like if you were to take, if you were to take like British culture and you take British, British cuisine, which I hate. Right, but <laughs> I, I, I hate I hate British cuisine, like you know Yorkshire pie and everything. I don't like it, but it's like kind of like there's some British people. What's name? Their favorite food is either pizza, right, which is like Italian. It's not it's not British, or they, they like curry. And it's like and it's like all our cultures, what's name? Mm-hmm. Well, globally, are better because we have things from other cultures. Yes, right? and I'm just like and so and so if it's not it's not, so it's not just a question of like well I like to eat Chinese food, but I don't like Chinese people. It's like kind of like <laughs> let's 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 get to know each other. And I, yes. I, and I right at the beginning of the movement, I had somebody reach out to me, asking, you know, what can I do? And how can I engage? And I was like, and how how can I kind of like you know um, be a, be an ally and also be a co-conspirator? And how can I support you know um, how to call black people? And I said, well, I said, do you have any? Do you have do you, do do you have any black friends? Like you know, mm-hmm. have, have, do you do you go do you go to black areas in London and go and go and go and eat in black restaurants? And like mm-hmm. things, simple things, simple mm-hmm. things. Like because well, if you hang yes. out there, you meet people, you speak, yes. people, you 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 how do you call it? You fraternize with people, and 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 you start you start getting friendly, and so on and so forth. Like and and she has a daughter, I think, and and I don't think her daughter has apart from maybe the black kids she's at school, right? You know, kind of like has had a black friend come over for a sleepover and stuff like that. It's just like it's very very simple. It's just that the normal things that you do with your white friends. Find yourself a black person. And yeah, black person, do it too. Or a yeah. Chinese person or an LGBTQ person. You know. Yeah. We, it's just that we become so comfortable in what we mm-hmm. have in our daily lives and our daily schedules. And I actually have a friend who's in my um. I'm in a master's program. If you didn't know that, Mervin, for my for counseling. Um, mm-hmm. and I have one more semester. And one of my friends at a different campus. I actually commend him because he's he's a white male, Caucasian, like mid forties. Um, and he does research, um, like he reads all these books about discrimination and like how he can help the, with with discrimination and with and with racism and the things that he can do. He's a big supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and he's uh, he's actually been really inspirational to me in that regard. Um, so I think it's things like that, like just pointing out the problem and saying things like, Catherine and I are a member of the, of the white majority. We're we're privileged white women, and we're sitting here having this conversation. I think these are the things that need to happen. Well, and then you have to make action out of it. You know, you can't just you can't just run your mouth. Um, for instance, I, I told a story earlier about an organization that I ran to do, which I really, really like. It's a national, soon to be international organization. And they asked me to be a, a leader of a certain part of their group. And I was all into it. And then all of a sudden, I was looking through, you know, videos of their events and things like that. And I realized, everybody's white that's in power mm-hmm. like that, that's in power yeah. this is this is the whitest group of people i've ever seen in my life and and not everybody in the organization okay but mm-hmm. but just everybody in, in power and so i reached out to them and i said yeah i'm not going to do this anymore i i'm out you know deuces and and they they said why why are you why are you backing out i said i can't be part of this this is horrible. Yeah. Like you are a national organization, <laughs> hundreds of people, and you're telling me you can't find one black person, yeah, one Hispanic person, that. one Middle Eastern person, something. So here's what happened though. They had not realized this about themselves. <laughs> right, yeah. it's like, I mean, it's, it's a level, it's a level of ignorance. And, it, and it's like, I don't, and the thing is like, I don't, to be, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, mean, I guess my experience is one of a black man. I don't know if I can truly understand that that is like that 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 can be a mistake. You know what I, I think I, it I, is. I, I don't, Here, I, I, and I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's that it's um. What I say, what's what it's it's premeditated. I'm not saying I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but I'm just like you can't not notice these things. I mean, I, it's like that one's a pretty tough one not to have noticed. I will. I will preface my next statement by agreeing with you there that that one with in particular was very hard not to have noticed but a lot of times what i've seen is at least in, in my conversations with other people is that they don't think of themselves as uh, racist or uninclusive or anything and so therefore anything that they do cannot be that it, it's it's just this 
I don't identify that way. <laughs> no, the way that you make sure that you stay that way is by double checking yourself and going, oh, whoops, well, you know. <laughs> I have some psychology behind this. Um, very, yeah. very subject matter, if you don't mind me chiming in real quick. Sure. So the thing that occurs to me here is people don't want to be uncomfortable. And when I say people don't want to be uncomfortable, I mean white people don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to sit here and look at things <laughs> very objectively and see, subjectively, really, and see what we are creating, what we are causing, because it hurts and it's painful. And this, mm -hmm. the psychology here is that as humans, and this is no excuse, because I am an avid advocate for awareness and self-awareness especially, but what's happening psychologically is that as humans are programmed to increase pleasure and decrease pain, we are programmed to avoid pain. And so what's happening is we have a lot of unaware, more ignorant, I'll use the word, sure, just unaware people going going about, seriously, I'll just say it, I don't mm -hmm. care. It can, um, people can get mad at me, that's all right. Um, but the, yeah, they get, but that's what it is. They don't want to be uncomfortable, so they don't- It's true. It. They say, oh, I'm perpetuating the problem, I'm doing something crappy. Yes. And the other, I think kind of the, the next, the next piece to that is so, so they don't want to be uncomfortable. They don't want to, they don't want to do that. Then, then there's this one. I want to get your take on this, Mervin, because this is, this is one of the things that just, it almost cracks me up, but then it's so aggravating that it's not funny is they will find the one black person <laughs> or this one little group of, of, of Hispanics or somebody that, that agrees with their ignorance that says, no, there's not a problem. No, there's not this. And, and I do want to say that, yes, plenty, uh, plenty of very wonderful, amazing people have overcome difficult situations, okay, and still risen above and still accomplished a lot of things. And yes, your own personal behavior has a great deal to do with that. I do not want to undermine that. I am a big proponent that your own strength takes you takes you so far. But what is your take on that idea that, oh, I found a black person or a woman or whoever that does not think that this is a problem? I mean, I think, I think like, I mean, like, uh, not to get political again, but I think like I am, um, wasn't it this something, something James, I think this, the guy, this um, Republican guy who basically like this, didn't want to release the papers for, for Brianna Taylor, basically kept everything private. And basically everybody's calling him a house Negro. I don't know if you heard about him, but he's a black Republican. And, um, and, um, and like, you know, the black community is basically kind of like, you know, if he was to go out in that community, I think they would just probably just like, you know, <laughs> tar and feather. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and so like you, I've, I've come across this myself and, um, and, 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 and in all honesty, um, how do you call it? I've been, I've been guilty of it myself. And I've been guilty of it myself because like my socialization is very, very different. So like, when I was, I was born in, I was born in the UK, but when I was two and a half years old, I went to Sierra Leone. So when, when I started growing up, um, between and your your socialization or self identity is actually you form pretty much a good identity for yourself who who you are you mm -hmm. know in psychology between ages zero to, and five you pretty much mm -hmm. already know who you are and and kind of like your only sense of self value self worth and so I never grew up um, as a child actually knowing that I was black I, I, <laughs> I found I, I found that out I found that out when I came I, when I came to um to Belgium which I, I was I was I was six and a half at the time. And I remember the first time that a white kid tried to be racist with me. It's like, um, and it just didn't work because like, I, I, I already have a strong sense of self. So I've never been the kind of person try to be racist with me. It just does, it doesn't work. And so basically I, I remember this first example. So this kid says to me, oh, Mervyn, you're like dog poo. You're brown like dog poo, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, so, and, so like, um, and so I just go to him. I said, yeah, well, you know what? I said, you're dog poo too. Because when dog poo dries in the sun, it becomes white. Right, and, and there and, you go. And I, and, and That's I, a great I, comeback. I, I, yeah, but I've always been like that. It's like you, you can't get to me, and for me, I can like right. somebody, somebody who, somebody who feels that they need to put me down. They're the one. They're the ones with the issue, right? They're the ones like right. I, I don't spend my time having to put anybody down. But like going back to what you're saying, finding the, those that black person. I used to, because of my socialization and how I felt about my blackness and how I felt about myself. You know, sense of self and you know, my self-pride and, and how I go about, how I go about in the world, you know, I just thought, well, you know, other black people, like, they just need to get that, right? And I was just like, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I'm like, you know, well, other black, uh, black uh, and, that, uh, and this is like the, um, the Congolese in, in, um, in, uh, in, in Belgium. I was like, well, you know, they, they, it's, they're different from the, the, the black British and in the same way that the, the, the black British are uh, different from the, from the black mm -hmm. Americans. And I, and I wasn't, I wasn't, I mean, certainly not wise enough. I certainly wasn't educated enough to understand, like you know, socialization and how that happens for different people, and how right. if 
if as a girl, you know, you, you're growing up and you're told like, well, girls don't do this and girls don't do that. And girls do this and girls do that. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a whole, there's an entire universe of things that you're going to tell yourself you can't do because, mm-hmm. because, you know, you're a girl. And in the same way that like, when you say, when you're talking about like, um, like um, black people not being able to see, not, not being able to see other black people doing certain things. If you're not exposed to like, you know, um, you know, I, I had a black mom who basically like, you know, put together furniture, moved us house um, five times, bought two homes, was saying, put a three. I'm just used to a strong black woman. I just, I just, I just know that women can do everything. There was, there was never <laughs> such thing as like, I never, I never became the, the, the man of the house. There were no, right. men, there were no jobs for men or jobs for women. So like, I've just always known that like, there's no difference. So I think that like your socialization and your your family context, there are tons and tons of things that come into play. And I think when those black people are trying to find that black person, it's just an, it's just the black person who's just as ignorant as they are, in the sense right. in the sense in the sense that like that black person is not taking anything into consideration. Um, how do you call it, about the person's upbringing, the circumstances? Right. Um, you know, and I, I hate to cut you off, Marvin. I'm so sorry, but we're running behind now. <laughs> so I gotta go. <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, they, they you. It's the perpetuation. They're on the same side of the fence of the ignorance. It's yeah. not thinking outside of their experience and thinking about other people's experience and other people's. Um, concerns. So I want to thank you both, Mervyn and Michaela, for coming on. Mm-hmm. Everybody connect to them. These are awesome human beings. Connect to them and to Jolyn as well, who is on before. Have a wonderful rest of the day, guys. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> Bye. And I think we have um, 